I love me some Walden Farms. Wow, that was a weak burp. That was fucked up. Oh, whatever. Okay, so, just making this really quick video. Um, this is to my first time competitive bodybuilders. This is just my attempt to uh, give you an idea of what it's like. I made a video a few days ago talking about my my first show and how it went, you know, but I didn't really talk too much in detail really about the show itself, you know. There's a few things that you won't expect, so when you get there you're going to be shitting your pants. You're going to be nervous. That's the first thing. I don't care how prepared you are, you're going to be nervous. Um, I practice my posing a lot, probably five times a week, about 10 to 20 minutes, probably each session, which is a lot compared to most people, you know, most first time competitors. And that was not enough because what you, your nerves take control of you, you know, when you step out there, you're in front of judges. I think it's five or six judges, six six judges maybe, five or six, whatever, doesn't matter. But uh, they're going to call out your quarter turns and all your mandatory poses. And it's nerve-wracking. And what what's different about posing with, you know, posing at your house and posing on stage is you don't have the mirrors. So that's one thing, you don't have the mirrors. And also the degree to which you're flexing. You might think you're flexing hard, but when you when you step on stage and you're flexing, you have to remember they're looking at your entire body the entire time. I'm not quite sure how they judge it, whether each person is looking at a specific person on stage, uh, whether each judge is looking at a specific person, or if one judge is looking at one body region, um, you know, things like that. I'm not quite sure what the criteria is in that sense, but I do know that when you think you're flexing 100% in the mirror and you're used to that and you step on stage and you flex, you're flexing 110% and you're going to be shaking. You know, there were some people that I saw um, at this OCB show and they were shaking like fucking crazy. And I felt, I mean, I was shaking like my hamstring when you had to do the back double and my arms and hamstring like were shaking. but wasn't to the extent of some of these guys and it's because I practice you know um, one thing is don't get the misconception that you're ever ahead and that you're gonna peak too early because there's no such thing guys you want to be as conditioned as possible as conditioned as possible give yourself enough time uh, don't rush it by any means but you got to know when to turn it up and when to kind of back off a little bit. And that's one thing that people don't really think about too much. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. Don't go in thinking peak week is going to do some magic because it's not. You know, uh, Eric Helms, I believe it was, said that him and Jeff Alberts in a, a video, they were talking about peak week and they said that It'll, a good peak week will make you look 5% better, maybe, as opposed to making you look like shit, because you do all these voodoo things, you know, you make changes drastically, me and my friend Ron that competed uh, together, we were talking about it today, that you should just stick with what you know works, don't go fucking things up the last week before, and uh, you'll be alright, would you rather look like the best you did during your prep? or 15% worse because you carb loaded wrong and you know you got really depleted or you know spilled over so that's one thing to keep in mind also another thing is guys some shows don't allow dream cam some don't allow um, Pam spray you know all these things so you gotta check ahead of time and also they have certain um, 
like you can have multicolored trunks and shit like that, which that's not really a big deal, but um, just things to be aware of. Also, guys, when you are out on stage, you're going to be nervous, first of all, but the lights are going to be above. It could be good lighting, it could be shitty lighting, so you want to be as dark as possible. Um, I used Dream Tan number two and I put two coats on and that did fine for me. So I, I strongly recommend Dream Tan. It's like a lotion. Some people use Pro Tan, some people do Spray Tan, but Dream Tan's cheap and it's effective. Well, it's not really cheap, but cheap compared to some of the Spray Tans that there are. Um, I was talking to some guy backstage and he was saying that his, his Spray Tan costs like $200 or something. It was ridiculous. But, um... And uh, with the Dream Tan, what happened with me was I was the seventh class, like there was the physique and everything, and I was the debut, the teen, and the novice, which was the seventh, calling out the eighth and the ninth. So I had to pose two times in a row, go through all the poses. I got like a three minute rest, and then I went out again. So I was out there for a long time, and it's hard when you're squeezing as hard as you can. Um, you know, your muscles can only endure so much at once. Before you need a break, you need some water, you need some food or something. So, you know, fatigue sets in. I didn't think it would happen to me, but it did. You know, I got fatigued. And also, you get really hot because those lights, the way the lights are, is it, it shines down on you for the lighting. Uh, it makes you look lighter than you are. That's why you have to be darker. But it also, like makes like a coat because it's so bright you can't see the crowd it's weird because they could see you but you can't see the crowd you can see the judges but that's it and maybe like the first row of people but that's it you can't see you know further than that so you're gonna have to remember that and try to smile guys it's hard I got <laughs> corrected so many times people were yelling at me from the from the crowd smile 33 smile 33 you know and uh you know, it's it's hard when you're flexing so hard uh, to remember to smile. And you'll smile for two seconds, and then they'll say, all right, quarter turn to your right, and then you'll just completely forget again. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and also with the lights, guys, they're really hot. Like, when you're standing on stage, even, like, walking across the stage, like, after the show is over, it's hot as fuck. It is so hot. So you're going to sweat. Some people were like drenched in sweat. My tan was rubbing off a little bit. You could see in a couple of the pictures where it was like you could see dark streaks. Not a lot. It was just a couple small lines. But it will run. And that hindered some of my posing. Um, like the side tricep, the way I do it is I grab my hand with my other hand behind my back. And because of the dream tan, you have to cover all over your body because they'll dock you if it's not on your, on your feet, on the tops of your feet and your hands and armpits and stuff like that so um, you know it affects your grip and I couldn't grab onto my hand well so then my pose is all fucked up it was a mess so you know there's a lot of things that I learned the first time coming also the backstage experience you know you expect uh, the pump up room to be like what you see in the Mr. Olympia or you know the Arnold or some shit where they have like bench benches <laughs> Where you can do some fucking presses and shit and like dumbbells up to 100 pounds. No, you gotta bring your own shit. Um, what I did was I brought like the the push up set. Actually, I think it's right over here. To be honest. Right there. Those little bars. So you can do push ups uh, to get a nice chest pump. And also, my friend Ron let me use his resistance bands uh, to do some arm shit. But, uh,. That's basically what it is. That's for this show. I know not all shows are the same. Sometimes they might have like a couple dumbbells, but this was backstage at a theater, so it was like uh, a bunch of rooms with mirrors where you could pose. Like the whole wall would be a mirror, and then you could just set your bags or whatever and just hang out and shit. And there was like five rooms, and uh, everybody just gathered and hung out and shit, and. Uh, you know, it really helps if you have an assistant, someone to help you backstage, someone to hang out with. But unfortunately for me, I didn't have somebody for my first show. Uh, I was all alone. My family came to support me, like I said. 
So I really thank them for that. And my girlfriend and her mom came. But backstage, I didn't have someone to help me. You know, my friend Ron, who's also competing, is the one that put my tan on for me. And uh, without him, I would have been fucked. I probably wouldn't have even competed. Because if you don't go out there with a tan, you're, you're going to look like shit. And you're going to look like shit. That's the bottom line. You're going to look like shit. You're going to want people in the crowd to support you, to yell things out. Um, like, there was some lady. I have no idea who she was. She wasn't there with my family. But she was yelling to me to keep my abs in. And my dad would yell out, like, wheels or, like, legs or something like that, or glutes or some shit. And uh, that really helps you because that, you know, they're telling you what to do, what you need to work on uh, before the judges can really see. And they'll be looking, oh, 33 glutes, and they'll boom, look at 33. And by then, you'll be flexing or you will be flexing your glutes. You know, shit like that. So if you have someone to yell out uh, what helps you or what stands out on yours, uh, on your physique, then that's always a great thing, you know, and, um, it's oftentimes overlooked, so, <laughs> things you're gonna need backstage, uh, first of all, you're gonna need your trunks, you're gonna need your dream tan, you're going to need food, and you're gonna need a lot of water. See, people do these drastic fucking things in peak week, especially show day with the manipulation of water and everybody's heard of the sodium potassium pump and shit like that but it goes without saying like I said earlier actually don't do anything drastic because you could really fuck yourself up and turn out looking like shit you know you might look better the week before the show uh, before you started doing all these fucking bullshit things we learned in anatomy how the sodium potassium pump works and you know it's it's hard to nail it down perfect, so, you know, just stick to, you know, you could have some simple sugars, you know, Twix bar is a good one. I like Snickers more. Um, I actually had a Reese's because I said, I want to go for broke. This thing looks awesome. It's big, and I've never had this kind before, so that's why I went with that. Um, next show, I believe I'm going to try to get my hands on a Mars bar, but... You know, you don't want to overindulge because what happened with me was my stomach did distend a little bit for the uh, for the prejudging, a little bit. It wasn't horrible, but it was just a little harder to keep my stomach in than it usually is. So I'm just going to have a little bit to eat this time. Like, I'm going to wake up. I'm not staying in the hotel at the Big East Natural. That is the one in Binghamton I was talking about. I sent my mo money order in today. I'm not staying at the hotel, so that means I'm probably going to wake up around 4 and head up that way because Binghamton's about two hours away from my house. So, you know, i got to save some extra money, so I'm just going to drive up the day of and uh, do the check-in there and the polygraph and all that other stuff. But actually, I don't have to polygraph. I forgot. Yeah, so now I could go take a bunch of steroids and, you know, uh, not serious. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, what the hell was I? Oh, okay. So, when I wake up, I'm just going to have a big breakfast. And, uh, not a big breakfast, but a moderate-sized breakfast. Probably some oats with, uh, some Walden Farms. Maybe a couple pancakes from, uh, the little Bisquick box that I have. Or, it's Aunt Jemima, actually. But, uh, I'm not going to go too heavy, but I'm going to hit the carbs a decent amount. And that's going to be it, you know. Before, I was snacking on uh, rice cakes and shit backstage. And I, I filled up my stomach too much, and I won't make that mistake this time. Also, this is why I'm really doing these competitions. I want to win. I want to meet some more people, you know. But the biggest thing is experience, first off. And secondly, is to figure out my peak strategy and what works, okay. So this past... Um, peak week, what I did was I kept everything the same, did my circuit, circuit workouts. Um, like I said, it was kind of fucked up. I, I shouldn't have done that, really. And, uh, let's see, Thursday I did 425 carb I ended up doing. And then Friday, well, Friday was 400 carb. And then the day of the show, I had my meals prior, which I ate too much. So what, the, what I'm going to do this time is just Thursday... 
400 carb. Friday, just a regular day. Saturday, a moderate sized breakfast. And uh, be right before I step on stage, maybe a rice cake with some peanut butter and then my little candy that's going to be the best. Or some Ben and Jerry's. I don't know. But uh, we'll, re we'll cross that path when we get there. And then when it comes to after that show, I'm not going to be able to binge. I'm still going to get a burrito because, uh, let's be honest, why the fuck would I not? But, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be eating much that day. So... One burrito is basically going to be a majority of my calories. That and my breakfast. So, you know, it's not really going to hurt me. And one week later comes the Albany show for the NMA. I was going to do the open class. Like I said, that was my main intention. But I realized, you know, the open class, you got to know where you stand. Bottom line. And uh, I'm not conditioned enough. I'm not large enough. And uh, my muscle's not mature enough. So I won't be doing the open class. I'm going to be doing the teen and the novice again. As, as with the uh, OCB Big East Natural. So, yeah. And uh, also, I phased out the May 3rd show in Schenectady, the DFAC uh, uh, Pro-Am, the Professional and Amateur. I'm not doing that show. That was something I talked about in uh, an older video. I was just going to die up until that. But uh, I decided I'm going to do this one in Bang of Ten instead. So, yeah.